the main story which has been told in this year's Energy Outlook is about the energy transition which has taken place and is likely to continue to take place over the next 20 years. On the demand side, there's a shift in the pattern of demand away from the conventional markets of old, the US and Europe, to fast growing Asian markets where the story there is one of increasing prosperity, this development of a burgeoning middle class demanding more energy which drives up global energy demand in the future. On the supply side, the story is one of continuing shift in the fuel mix um, towards lower carbon fuels. Renewable energy is the fastest growing energy source, almost quadrupling over this period of time. Non-fossil fuels overall provide around half of the total increase in primary energy over the next 20 years. And natural gas grows far more quickly than either coal or oil. We're seeing continued electrification of the world with almost two thirds of the growth in energy over the next 20 years going into the power sector to produce electricity. In terms of carbon emissions, the combination of slower growth in global energy overall and a shift in the fuel mix means the projected growth in carbon emissions over the next 20 years is far slower than in the past, around a third of the rate of the past. But carbon emissions are still projected to continue to rise, highlighting the need for more policy action. So we expect oil demand to continue to grow throughout the next 20 years, driven by increasing transport demand, particularly in those fast-growing Asian economies. But the pace at which oil demand is likely to grow is likely to slow over time as we see increasing fuel efficiency. So one question we ask when, uh, in the energy outlook is how quickly will electric vehicles penetrate the energy system? Our best guess is from about 1 million vehicles today to something closer to 100 million vehicles by 2035. That increase in electric vehicles will reduce the growth in oil demand by something just a little over 1 million barrels a day. By way of context, we think the increasing efficiency of all the, of the stock of conventional cars will reduce the growth of oil demand by something close to 16 million barrels a day. So we do expect electric vehicles to carry on growing very rapidly, but on our base case at least, the implications of that for oil demand aren't, aren't a game changer. We also like to see impacts coming from a broader aspects associated with the mobility revolution. Autonomous driving, so self-driving cars, car sharing, where you and I, um, instead of owning our car, share a car, and ride pooling, where not only do we share a car, we actually go in the car at the same time. What we do in the Energy Outlook is try and think of how those different aspects may interact with each other and think through how oil demand may be affected by the mobility revolution, which is almost certain to happen over the next 20 years. When you think about oil supply, the key context here is a world where the growth of oil demand is gradually slowing over time. And if you look into the distant future, at some point, oil demand will peak and start to decline. And the point we make in the energy outlook, in a world where there's an abundance of potential oil reserves and supply, what we may see is low cost producers, rather than rationing their supplies with the expectation that they can produce oil today, tomorrow or the next day, they may start to produce more oil. And so what we see is a gradual shift in the pattern of oil supplies with low cost producers producing ever increasing amounts of that oil and higher cost producers getting gradually crowded out. So we think natural gas will grow strongly over the next 20 years, far more quickly than either oil or coal. What's underpinning that is strong growth in the supplies of gas, particularly coming out from US shale, and also the rapid expansion of liquefied natural gas, LNG. So what's really special about LNG is it's mobile. And this mobility will help to integrate the global gas market. So just like we have an integrated oil market, if prices in different parts of the world start to diverge very significantly, LNG flows will be diverted from one part of the world to the other to bring them back down again. So we're moving to a globally integrated gas market held together by liquefied natural gas. China really matters 
It's the world's largest market for energy. It's also the world's largest growth market for energy. And what we're seeing is China's energy needs shift really dramatically. The growth of its economy is slowing over time. The structure of that economy is shifting away from the industrial sector, which is very energy intensive, towards more consumer service facing sectors of the economy, which are far less energy intensive. China's fuel mix is also changing really quite substantially as the government instigates a series of policies designed to shift its dependency away from coal towards cleaner, lower carbon fuels, renewable energy, natural gas and also nuclear energy. So these three things together, slower growth of the economy, shift in the structure of the economy, shift in fuel mix, have very significant implications for global energy markets. So one of the real benefits of publishing the Energy Outlook is the conversations it starts. And nearly always, as you have the conversation, the way you think about things will change and adapt. And so we keep on learning. And that learning process can happen in many different ways. So if people read the Energy Outlook, they have views, please get in contact with us. Contact us via bp.com and let us know what you think.